got some burn to it. You see that little pin? You can drive that. By the way, you don't want to dry fire everything. Just a little bit to the side of the shooter, one, two, three. All in 25, 25 and a half, 26 grains. Hey folks, Manny CA here with another informative gun video, hopefully to get you guys thinking and shooting and Hopefully loading your own because you know what, when it comes down to it, loading your own is the best option you got. Especially if you live in locales where it's going to get prohibitively expensive or even illegal to buy ammo outright, a la California. Today we're going to go over and go through the new GP144 Special. Oh man, you want to talk about a fun gun to shoot. Let's get a close up look at her. She is... Beautiful. Love at first sight. Let's get the other side. Yeah, it's a GP100. You guys are familiar. We did a comparison with the 357 GP100 and the 357 Smith & Wesson. Go back, look through the playlist. It's a great compilation. And here, just for fun, here she is. Oh, she's beautiful. You've seen we slicked her up. She's empty. We've slicked this puppy up, and she's smooth. Oh, man. Smooth as glass. A lot of people will say, well, you know what, Manny? I don't know why you're going to go with the 44 Special. It makes no sense. It's an obsolete round, an obsolete cartridge. That's heresy, I say. Heresy. Especially in a gun as beautiful as this. Look at that. Beautiful high stainless steel, great packing piece. Uh, in my opinion, the whole grips are a little too long, but you can buy the 38357 GP100 grips and swap them out. They'll fit. I just haven't done it yet. I don't carry this gun in a city. This is on a ranch. This is a ranching gun, up in the hills gun, um, just because it's so fun to shoot. And I mean, let's face it, you're, you're talking about a big bullet. You're talking a big chunk of lead. And that's what we're going to go through today is go through and talk about some of the myths, the misconceptions about loading this round. And we'll roll in some footage of shooting. If you guys like to shoot like I do, there is always an excuse to obtain a new firearm because especially wheel guns, I've got this thing for wheel guns. And I know most of you do too because I can see which videos you guys watch and which videos you don't watch. Wheel guns seem to be the lost stepchild. I would say the redheaded stepchild of the gun video world. And it's because they're not sexy. They're not sexy. What are you talking about? Look at the sleek lines on this puppy. Unfluted cylinder. Okay. Low hammer spur. Very nice. And look at the checkering on that hammer spur. Very, very good. Very rough, so nice to get a grip fun. on it. Um, adjustable rear sights, we love that. Front sights, look at that. High vis, green front sight. You guys know how many of these different types of front sights you can swap out. Go and check them out. Midway USA Brown Ales. Go and look. You can swap these out very easily to put whatever color you want. And that big hole. <laughs> I love that. Look at that. Just huge, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Oh man, is that beautiful or what? She's still dirty, excuse the mess. We were out there shooting her today. We shot her a couple times, put uh, I say six, 700 rounds through this puppy. And uh, the way we were loading them, they were pounding your fingers, pounding your hands, building carpal tunnel one round at a time. I know. You don't have to load them that high, but you do. I like to. Now, let's go over a couple of things here. This is the 3-inch version compared to the 686, which is the 4-inch version. 
Still, these two are considered competitors side by side. And you can see the difference in the top strap. See the thickness? Come on, really? There is no comparison. Look at that top strap. Look at that top strap. Of course, Smith & Wesson, beautiful gun. But the Ruger is the workhorse. That's all I got to say. Another thing about these Rugers is that with the unfluted cylinder, a lot of guys will say, ah, oh, you don't want to overpressure these, overrun them. I understand. If you want a 44 mag, go with a 44 mag. But the 44 Special, I think, can be loaded a little on the warm side, not to 44 mag. Remember, 44 Special, these guns, the SAMI specs, and that's the industry standards, runs 15,500 PSI for the 44 Specials. And they do that because you have a lot of older Smiths, a lot of older Smith & Wesson guns that um, the old school blued that you're not going to be able to shoot the really hot loads through. Hey, that's how it goes. But these are modern guns. I know you got the Charters, got the Bulldog and 44 Special, and I wouldn't load it hot either, not the Charter. But the GP100, I would. Now, let me show you something else. On the Rugers, take a notice over here. Where do they have the cylinder notch? bolt notch centered. They're centered directly over the middle of each cylinder where there's the least amount of metal. That is the weakest point of this gun. Okay? You see how they did that? Weakest point of the gun, thinner strap. I would stay with lighter loads. Last two rounds. Okay, she's beautiful. I know. Supermodel, right? Uh, maybe a... Uh, older vegan hippie, rode hard, put away wet. I don't know. She got pretty lips. That's what I would think. This is the one you would want to do the work around the house. This is the one you'd want to bring out and show your friends. What do you want me to say? You know, nothing against you vegans. I got a lot of vegan friends. Not really. I don't have any friends at all, actually. All right, let's go through and go through the, uh, some of the specifications on this gun. We already mentioned the wrist adjustable rear sight. But one thing, there is a gap. Oh, my God. Just like that girl you knew in high school. A gap right here between the front sight and the top of the barrel. Can you see that? Let's get that on camera. There we go. There is a gap on the back and on the front. Can you see that? All right, so called Smith & Wesson, I'm sorry, called Ruger, and I said, hey, why is there a gap here? You know what they told me? They said because that's the way they could get the front sight on the frame without damaging the finish on the gun. So take it for what you will. Believe me, don't believe me, think it's a load of crap. Hey, that's what they told me. Another thing guys we're talking about is undersized throats. Oh yeah, that's what they were talking about. Undersized throats. Um, we did our check with this, our rounds. These are not sized and they slide in. You see that? Each one slide. You see some of our videos, our revolver videos, we teach you how you can check and make sure that your throats are not undersized. These are .430 and they fit fine. Um, another thing, point of contention I had is look at the forcing cone. Oh yeah. Can you see the forcing cone? Let's see if we could get that right there. There we go. Whoop. The forcing cone right there. It is not as thick as I would like to see it. Some guys are complaining about the forcing cone cracking on them while they're shooting. Uh, I haven't had any problems with it. That forcing cone is I'm not going to worry about it until something happens and I'll send it back to the factory. But you can see it is thinner when you compare it there to the Smith & Wesson. You see that? Yeah, that's thinner. I'm not going to bust out the calipers and measure it. You guys, you could take a look at it um, because it's just a pain in the butt to try to get it inside the window on camera. But let's get these guys together. You can take a look. You see the difference in thickness. Is that a worry? Point of contention? 
uh, I wouldn't worry about it. Like I said, we're not going to be loading this gun to 44 mag velocities. But what we will do is load it a little warmer than usual. Now we know we showed you on the 686 how the cylinder notches were over the middle of the cylinders. Look at this. They're off center. More meat in the cylinder walls. Take it for what you will. I hand load, I hand load everything, I cast my own bullets. I think it's a lot better. A lot more economical, a lot more feasible. Uh, double action, you're looking at a good 12 pounds. That's very mighty. Single action, we tested out, we busted out the lineman tester, and we were looking at about four and a half, four, four and a half, five pound single action. Still very doable. Very smooth, no creep. That's when the trigger goes back before it releases. No, it is very nice. Say what you want, there were some issues with the gun coming out in the beginning. Uh, Ruger has seemed to address these issues. I wouldn't worry about it. If you can find them on the secondary market, get them. They're awesome, especially if you like 44 Special. Now remember, the 44 Special came from the 44 Russian, which is just a shortened version of 44 mag and a 44 special. So you had 44 Russian that came out first. I don't have any 44 Russian cases, but just so you guys could take a look. Here, this is a 4440, which they call 44 center fire. Okay? You can see it has a little bit of a neck on that case. This is they made handguns out of this for this round and lever guns for this round. So you can carry one type of ammo for both. We did a, a, a video on this also, if you go back and take a look at it. The Chiapa 4440, where we're having some issues with the cylinder, with the, these, uh, this brass, Starline brass, having the primer pockets just a little too deep, and it wasn't igniting the primers every time. Go back and take a look at our playlist. Uh, just type in 4440, uh, Chiapa, good, the bad, and the ugly. We go through it all. Here's a 44 mag, and here's a 44 special. And you can see the difference. 44 special special is a little shorter. 44 mag is longer. They did this on purpose. That way you couldn't chamber the heavier rounds in the older guns. So you have the progression. 44 Russian, 44 special, along with the 44 center fire, and then the 44 mag, which came about. And then of course the 454 Casul, the 440, the 45, 455 uh, mag. <laughs> 45 mag. There's so many different rounds, you guys. Look into it. They're all they all take. Um, I'm sorry. The 45 mag takes a 4.52 diameter, not a 44. Oh, and we failed to mention that the 44 special is not a true 44, right? 44 is 0.429, maybe 0.430, so it's a 43. But 44 special just sounds great. Now you guys saw us shooting a lot of our hand loads. We got some footage rolled in, testing our hand loads. I love the hand load. It's therapeutic. Uh, not to mention you've got so many different rounds that you can load for. I mean, you want to talk about having some fun? Oh man, these are some of the, the, the offerings that we've got here. Uh, we'll go through some of these. Spear, very nice. And remember again, if you've got a 44 mag, you can load 44 mag bullets in your 44 special, no problem. Just try not to hot rod them. Gold dot, concealed carry, if I ever decide to carry this. Look at these, these are beautiful. Bonded, you can see those. That big hollow point, oh man. Look at that, oh man, that's so cool. How come we're not getting focus? There we go, focus, focus, focus. Very cool, very cool. Gold dot, I love it. They also make, these are, I believe these are short barrel. Well, they tout these as being short barrel velocities. That means these will open and mushroom in short barrels, which is what our three inch GP100 is, short barrel. Then you got your good old fashioned spear. These are old, but you got your good old fashioned spear, some semi watt cutter, look at that. Very nice with the copper bot bases. You also have got soft points, 240 grainers, which are standard. You can shoot them out of the 44 Special. Nosler sporting handgun. Noslers are awesome, economical, good bang for your buck. Very nice, very soft lead, great shooting. 
And your Hornady XTP, love Hornady. They got, you can find them on sale sometimes, they're a really good price. Look at that nice big hollow point. Great, I love gold out for self-defense, but I will not dismiss, dismiss the XTP or I will not dismiss, this is the, some of the rounds that we cast for. This is the uh, Lyman Mold 429421. That's 429421 for all you mold geeks out there. And you can see it's got the square groove here, square lube groove. And that square lube groove, let's see if I get close here. There we go. The square lube groove helps to keep the lube where it belongs. Plus, you got a nice, big, deep crimp. Or you could apply a nice crimp so the gun, during the recoil of your other four rounds, this doesn't shift in the case and lock up your revolver. Highly, highly recommend that you guys cast your own. But these, these are great hunting rounds. These are awesome hunting rounds. You can take down muleys, elk. You guys are so inclined to hunt with a handgun uh, or even a lever gun. But uh, check your lever gun specifications because sometimes these will lock up lever guns if they're too long. Most of these do. You have to use, um, they've got smaller caliber, eh, about 200 grainers. 240 grains, probably like the max. We also have plated bullets. I'm not afraid to use plated bullets. These are plated some um, plated hollow points. Kind of funny, but they're soft lead plated. You can drive these to cast bullet velocities. Don't go over, I would say, 1,300, 12 or 1,300 feet per second. In this gun, you're going to be hard-pressed to go 1,300 feet per second without doing some pretty good damage to the gun, so don't do it. And these are what we were using in some of the videos. These are just extreme bullets, 200 and, what are these, 200 grain, extreme, 44. We loaded these over 8.5 grains of unique. 8.5 grains of unique does the job. Okay, and here are some of the other. This is the XTPs that we is the XTPs that we loaded up with the same 8.5 grains, and we got 900 to and eh, 950, 980 feet per second with these rounds. Here are the nozzlers. You can see how we seated them. We got the little. We put the crimp there on the cantilever. So these were all hand loads. Fun for planking. And if you're in bear country, something like this you'd want. It'll take care of your two and four legged critters. Nozzlers, I love nozzlers because they're just economical and you still get a jacketed bullet to shoot. Let's see what else we got. That's about it for ammo wise that we got loaded up. We shot a lot of our stuff out on the range. You saw, we'll roll in some of that footage. Uh, if you guys are into revolvers, another thing I, I could recommend, another really fun book. Uh, if you guys are familiar with Taffin, this is a great book. Book of the 44 by John Taffin. This thing is awesome. I, got, I should do a review on it. Black and white would have been great in color, but I heard somewhere they wanted too much money for him to do the gun, to do the book, excuse me, in color. So he just opted for black and white so he could have all the photos that he had wanted. But you want to talk about loads of information. Look at that. You've got load data. I mean, load data and holsters and all kinds of stock, aftermarket stocks, uh, groupings. And this goes all the way from black powder guns. And we're talking about the 44 Russian right there. Black powder guns all the way to the first cartridge conversions. Just tons of history, tons of fun. Taffin's a, like one of us, one of me, one of you. Shooting enthusiast, man. Just likes to shoot. It's got the Anaconda and kind of hunting loads and lever guns all in 44. 44 is an old cartridge. It just makes sense. It's
they make sense. 44 is a great round. Get out there, do some shooting. Don't be scared to shoot these guns. And don't be an, inner chair, an armchair internet warrior. Unless you've gone out and actually done the testing, done the shooting, you don't know what these rounds are going to do. Uh, don't push the envelope. You don't want to get hurt. You don't want to hurt anybody else. You've seen some of the uh, videos, some of the photos I've rolled into some of the previous videos about uh, shooting other people's hand loads. You see some of the devastation that overpowered ammo can do. You want to stay away from that because that, that will ruin your day. It will ruin your gun. War void the warranty. And a lot of these places, they say you're not supposed to shoot um, hand loads through your gun anyway. But we're all adults here. We all know what's going on. I would prefer to carry the 44 Special. It's a little bit heavier, I want to say. Well, actually not. It's about the same weight. It's big boy. It weighs almost about the same as the 4-inch Smith & Wesson. But you can't beat the GP100. I hope. I know that they've made one in, with a 5-inch barrel now. And that is really cool. 5-inch GP100. Man. Too many guns. Not enough time. So if you guys... We did a video on slicking this up, so I'm not going to do the video. I'm not going to go through and slick this up. I don't got the time. Go back in the playlist. Check out the GP100 slicking up. It will run. This gun will be the exact same policies, the exact same procedures as doing that other one. Okay, and again, we're not gunsmiths. We're shooting enthusiasts. And if we can get put the equivalent to a 1,000 rounds of wear on this gun so it's smooth like glass, it breaks like glass, uh, instead of spending three or four hundred dollars on ammo, why not? We're not gunsmiths. We're shooting enthusiasts. It's our gun. It's no different than guys hot rodding their cars, okay? Or um, hot rodding their basketball shoes or whatever the hell those people on the sports plantation do. Anyway, go out there, do some shooting, have some fun, be safe. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, send them down below. Armchair shooters need not apply. Till next time.